بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue from where we left off last week and we've arrived at this subsection in the book of the Kitab Tawheed where the Shaykh says Ashirk Ta'rifu wa anwa'uhu so um, the definition of shirk and the types of shirk so this is what we're going to go through today inshallah and try to get through this lesson so the Shaykh he begins and he says Ta'rifuhu its definition he says Ashirku huwa ja'lu shariqin lillahi ta'ala fi rububiyyatihi wa ilahiyyatihi wal ghalibu al ishraq fi al uluhiyyati bi an yad'uwa ma'a Allahi ghayrahu aw yasrifu lahu shay'an min anwa'i al ibada ka dhabh wa al naghr wa al khawf wa al raja' wa al mahabbati wa shirku so then the Sheikh says in this opening paragraph, he says that Shirk, it is making a partner alongside Allah or taking a partner alongside Allah in his lordship or in his worship. And the Sheikh says most of the time, Shirk that occurs, it's in Allah's lordship for the most part. And that somebody supplicates, or for example, supplicates with Allah, uh, supplicates alongside Allah, someone else. So he supplicates to somebody other than Allah, as well as supplicating to Allah. So thereby creating a partner alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example. Or he, he shares those things that are particular to Allah, for example, worship, which is for Allah, is supposed to be for Allah alone where the person shares some of it with somebody else or something else from the types of ibadah, for example. For example, the Sheikh says, he gives us a few examples here, he says, like um, sacrificing, like sacrificing, taking an oath, fear, hope and love. And the Sheikh says that shirk it's the it's the it's the greatest sin. And that is because of a few reasons. So the Sheikh explains these, as you can see in the numbers, one, two, three, and four on this page. There's more up to five points here, so let's go through them. The Sheikh says, Li Annahu Tashbihun Lil Makhluki Bil Khaliki fi Khasa is in Ilahiya Faman Ashraka Maallahi Ahadan Fakad. شبهه به وهذا أعظم الظلم قال تعالى إن الشرك لظلم عظيم والظلم هو وضع الشيء في غير موضعه فمن عبد غير الله فقد وضع الإبادة في غير موضعها وصرفها لغير مستحقها وذلك أعظم الظلم سيدنا الشيخ says in this uh, in the first point, why is it the greatest of sins? First point is because what's happening is the person who uh, um, does this action of shirk, they are likening the the creation to the creator. And something that's only specific to the creator, for example, worship, like worship is only for Allah Jalla Wala, but they are Obviously, turning their the person's turning their worship to Allah and also to other than Allah who's 
and to anything other than Allah is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Shaykh says, whoever uh, worships something other than Allah or alongside Allah, then he has basically made that thing similar, given a similar station to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore is shirk. And that is the greatest of oppressions, this is what the Shaykh says. And then he quotes uh, an ayah from the Quran, verse 13 from Surah, Surah Al-Luqman. Verily, shirk is a great oppression. And the Shaykh, he says that this oppression, the dhulm, what does a dhulm mean, dhulm generally? Dhulm means when you place something in other than its rightful place. So in this example, whoever worships other than Allah, then he has placed worship in other in other than his correct place. Why? Because worship is for Allah only and he and this person has actually worshipped somebody else or something else that isn't deserving of that worship, therefore it's wrong. So then the Shaykh continues, he says point two here and the second point أَنَّ اللَّهَ أَخْبَرَ أَنَّهُ لَا يَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ مِنْهُ قَالَ تَعَالَى إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَعَ <coughs> So in the second point, the Shaykh mentions that Allah has informed us that He does not forgive the one who does not repent from the shirk that he has fallen into. And the evidence is from Surah An-Nisa, verse 48, where Allah said, Verily Allah does not forgive that you set up partners and rivals in worship alongside him, and he forgives other than that to whoever he wills. And that is that if somebody commits shirk, and they die upon it, i.e. they haven't um, um, made it too far, they haven't um, repented from it and asked forgiveness from Allah of what they did. And if they die upon it, then they're in the hellfire because they've left the fold of Islam. So while the person is alive, if Allah guides them, then they ask for forgiveness. You know, then they're on a clean slate as long as they don't return to it. Point three, the Shaykh says, أَنَّ اللَّهَ أَخْبَرَ أَنَّهُ حَرَّمَ الْجَنَّةَ عَلَى الْمُشْرِكِ وَأَنَّهُ خَالِدَ مُخَلِّ مُخَلِّدًا أو وَأَنَّهُ خَالِدٌ مُخَلِّدٌ مُخَلِّدٌ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ قَالَ تَعَالَى إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةَ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارُ وَمَا لِلْعَالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارٍ سُورَةُ الْمَعْدَةِ بَعْضُ سَمِيْتُهُ So then the Sheikh mentions that Allah is informed is that He has made paradise uh, haram. He has prohibited paradise for the one who is a mushrik, a polytheist, one who commits shirk. And that this person will be in the fire eternally. And the evidence of that is from Surah Al-Maidah verse 72 where Allah said, Indeed, whoever uh, commits shirk with Allah or sets up partners or rivals in worship with Allah, then Allah has made uh, haram uh, paradise and his destination is a fire and there are no helpers for thee. The live all you mean, the all you mean, the oppressors, there's no help for them. The mushrikun. <clears throat> then the Shaykh goes on to say in point four, he says, Anna shirka yahbita أو أن شرك يحبط جميع الأعمال قال تعالى ولو أشركوا لحبط عنهم ما كانوا يعملون. So in point four, Allah says that that shirk it um, it basically nullifies all a major shirk. It nullifies all of the person's deeds who who's fallen into this greater shirk shirk al akbar. And then the ayah. That the Shaykh quotes from Surah Al Anam, verse 88. And if we go there and read part of that, then we'll see the meaning of that. But if they had joined in worship others with Allah, all they used to do would have been of no benefit to them. 
So that shows us that whatever action they do of good deeds and uh, whatever it may be is not accepted, is nullified because of the shirk that they do. And also, وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبَلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Surah Zumar verse 65. So let's have a look at that as well. Surah Zumar verse 65. And if we have a look at that, where Allah says, and the meaning of that is, And indeed it has been revealed to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as it was to those, Allah's messengers before you, if you join others in worship with Allah, then surely all your deeds will be in vain, and you will certainly be among the losers. And then point five, the shaykh, he says, أَنَّ الشِّرْكَ حَلَالُ الظَّمِ وَالْمَالِ قَالَ تَعَالَى فَاقْتُلُوا الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَيْثُ وَجَدْتُمُوهُمْ وَخُذُوهُمْ وَحْسُرُوهُمْ وَخُذُوهُمْ لَهُمْ كُلَّ مُرْصَدٍ and then the shaykh says that point five regarding shirk and that shirk it makes the person who's committing the shirk it makes their blood and their wealth halal permissible and then the shaykh he brings an ayah which we will go, go to the meanings of this is surah the toba verse five let's go to the meaning Wherever you find them and capture them and besiege them and prepare for them each and every ambush. So this is looking at the general meaning, not the actual suburb of why that I was revealed, but the general meaning with regards to uh, uh, shirk. And that it makes a person's blood on and um, wealth halal, obviously under the right conditions. That doesn't mean that uh, if you see somebody who's committing policies, like you just go and do that and you want to know. Under the Muslim rulership and with guidance, not with your own hands doing your own thing, no. <clears throat> then the Shaykh goes on to say also, he mentions a, a, a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here, and, um, uh, which we should read in Arabic here. Umirtu an uqatila nasa hatta yaqulu la ilaha illallah fa'idha qaluha عَسَمُوا مِنِّي دِمَاءَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ إِلَّا بِحَقِّهَا I have been commanded, I, Allah has commanded the Prophet, I have, I, have, I have been commanded to fight the people until they say there is none worthy of worship in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if they say this, or they say it, then they're Blood and their wealth is safe, protected. So this is also the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that backs up with the ayah that we read as well from the Quran in the speech of Allah. Point um, six. أن الشرك أكبر الكبائر قال صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا أنبئكم بأكبر الكبائر قلنا يا قلنا بلى يا رسول الله قال الإشراك بالله Al Hadith. You can see the references in the footnotes there. This is from Al Bukhari, one Muslim. <coughs> so then the Shaykh he says that shirk, it is, it is at the head of all of the major sins. As we know, we have major sins and minor sins. It sits at the top. It is the head, the mother of all major sins. It's at the top. It's the worst sin they can commit and fall and perpetrate. And the Shaykh then uh, quotes in Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said, Shall I not inform you of the, the most major of the major sin of the major sins, the most major of the major sins, the one that sits at the top? We said, I the Sahaba that are with him, they said, we said. Uh, yes, Rasulullah, the yeah, Rasul, all messenger of Allah. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied. He said, um, "Committing shirk with Allah, falling into polytheism with Allah Jalla wa'ala, 
and being undutiful and ungrateful to your parents. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, قال العلامة ابن القيم أخبر سبحانه أن القصد بالخلق والأمر أن يعرف بأسمائه وصفاته ويعبد وحده لا شريك به وأن يقوم الناس بالقسط وهو العدل الذي قامت به قامت به السماوات والأرض كما قال تعالى لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط سورة الحديد verse 25 so let's translate that then the sheikh he quotes al uh, alama ibn qayyim rahimahullah where he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us that the the point or the meaning of um, the command or the creation for example for, for the general meaning around this is that uh, with regards to shirk, worship, etc. We'll see, it'll, it'll be made clear as we read through here, this, this short uh, paragraph here. That we know him, i.e. Allah, by his names, and we know Allah by his attributes, and that, uh, that he's worshipped alone, and there's no partner set up or rival set up alongside him, i.e. upon Tawheed, and that the people, they, they, um, are just and that they they uphold justice in all of its affairs and then he quotes uh, Surah Al-Hadid verse 25 and if we go to uh, Surah Al-Hadid verse 25 we'll see the evidence being quoted here Indeed, we have sent our messengers with clear proofs and revealed with them the scripture and the balanced justice that mankind may keep up justice. So this is what um, the Sheikh has uh, brought in terms of evidence here. And he'll explain further as we go along. The Sheikh goes on to say, فَأَخْبَرَ سُبْحَانَهُ أَنَّهُ أَرْسَلَ رُسَلَهُ وَأَنزَلَ كُتَبَهُ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسَ بِالْقِسْتِ وَهُوَ الْعَدْلُ ومن أعظم القسط التوحيد وهو رأس العدل وقوامه وأن الشرك ظلم كما قال تعالى إن الشرك لظلم عظيم. So then the Sheikh clarifies what he said here when he quoted علامة ابن القيم رحمه الله. He says that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has informed us that He has sent messengers to us, that He has sent the revealed books to us, uh, that the people they uphold justice. Uh, and he quote, uh, equity and justice like this uh, and from the greatest of justice from the top of what justice actually is the first thing the greatest thing with regards to justice is the justice of Tawheed that's at the head of justice why? because we are fulfilling our primary duty that Allah created us for that is to worship him alone and not set up any rivals or partners alongside him in worship at Tawheed and not falling into a shirk polytheism. So that's at the top of it. And then the Sheikh brings an ayah, as mentioned earlier as well, a couple of pages up. Uh, he brings the same evidence again from Surah Al Luqman, verse 13. Verily, a shirk polytheism is a great oppression. The Sheikh goes on to say, so I'll just translate this before reading the rest. So the shirk says, a shirk, it is the most oppressive of oppressions. And a tawheed, it is the most just of all justice. That, that the oppression sits right at the top. Shirk sits right at the top of all oppressions. That is the mother of all oppressions, shirk is. And the mother of all justice, if we could put it this way, and the mother of all types of justice is at tawheed Then the Shaykh goes on to say, فَمَا كَانَ أَشَدُّ مُنَافَاتِ لِهَادِ الْمَقْسُودِ لِهَادِ الْمَقْسُودِ فَهُوَ أَكْبَرُ الْكَبَائِرِ إِلَىٰ أَنْ قَالْ فَلَمَّا كَانَ شِرْكُ مُنَافِيًا بِالْذَاتِ 
لِهَذَا الْمَقْصُودِ كَانَ أَكْبَرُ الْكَبَائِرَ الْإِطْلَاقِ وَحَرَّمَ اللَّهُ الْجَنَّةَ عَلَى كُلِّ مُشْرِكٍ فَأَبَاحَ دَمَهُ وَمَالَهُ وَأَهْلَهُ لِأَهْلِ التَّوْحِيدِ وَأَنْ يَتَّخِذُوهُمْ عَبِيدًا لَهُمْ لِمَا تَرَكُوا الْقِيَامَ بِعُبُودِيَّتِهِ وَأَبَى اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ أَنْ يَقْبَلَ أَنْ يَقْبَلَ لِمُشْرِكٍ لِمُشْرِكٍ عَمَلًا So let's stop there for a second. So then the Sheikh goes on to say here that from the from the most severest is shirk out of all of this, and and it's, it is the it is the major sin. It is the biggest of the major sins. It's right at the top, as mentioned earlier. So then the Sheikh says, and and when shirk. Because of shirk, sitting right at the top being the worst sin, taking people for taking somebody out of the fold of Islam, taking them away from Tawheed, then Allah, as 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 mentioned in the Quran, where the Shaykh mentioned the ayahs earlier in the lesson, that Allah has made haram impermissible for the polytheist paradise upon every polyth uh, polytheist and has made every polytheist's. Uh, wealth and blood permissible for the people of Tawheed and that they take them as uh, captives whether in the right situations obviously there's more to this this is just general looking at from a general perspective but because of the crimes and the shit that they do and that's at the head of it uh, Allah has prevented them and Allah has turned away from accepting their uh, their actions, their deeds that they do because of the shirk that they commit with Allah Jalla wa Ala. Or Allah will not uh, accept their intercession either because the requirement, as we know, of that is the person needs to be upon Tawheed and upon the Deen of Al Islam. <clears throat> and Allah needs to be pleased with him. And obviously, somebody who's committing shirk with Allah is uh, obviously earning Allah's displeasure uh, rather than pleasure. So uh, the Sheikh goes on to say, Oh Yajibu, uh, Oh Yujibu, uh, Oh Yujibu Lahu Fil Akhira Dawa, Oh uh, Yukbal Lahu Fiha Raja. So there won't be anything for this person. A person upon a shirk, a person who dies upon shirk, um, then there isn't anything, doesn't have a say, doesn't have anything uh, in, the, uh, in the hereafter, in the Akhira. There's, there's nothing for this person apart from the hellfire. That's it. So the Shaykh goes on to say, فَإِنَّ الْمُشْرِكَ أَجْهَلُ الْجَاهِنِينَ بِاللَّهِ حَيْثُ جَعْلَ لَهُ مِنْ خَلْقِهِ نِدًّا وَذَلِكَ غَيَةً وَذَلِكَ غَيَةُ الْجَهْلِ بِهِ كَمَا أَنَّهُ غَيَةُ الظُّلْمِ مِنْهُ وَإِنْ كَانَ الْمُشْرِكَ فِي الْوَاقِحِ لَمْ يُظْلِمْ لَمْ يُظْلِمْ رَبَّهُ وَإِنَّمَا ظَلَمَ نَفْسَهُ إِنْتَهَى So then the Shaykh says in this point, towards the end of this, uh, this point, point six, that the the polytheist the polytheist is the most ignorant of ignorance people with regards to Allah as in doesn't know anything Allah is a complete opposition because if the person truly knew Allah he would never commit shirk with him and he'd know what, what's upon him of Tawheed because why because the mushrik the the polytheist, from what he has set up, rivals with Allah. The rivals that he set up with Allah in worship. And this is uh, this shows the the extremes of the person's ignorance and the length of that person's ignorance. So the Sheikh mentions the likes of this. Point seven. The Sheikh says, "An shirka." تنقص وأيب نزح الرب سبحانه نفسه عنهما <تصفيق> فمن أشرك بالله فقد أثبت لله ما نزح نفسه عنه وهذا غاية المهادة لله تعالى وغاية المعاندة والمشاقة لله So basically here in point 7 the shirk mentions that, that uh, shirk um, it, uh, in essence, uh, let's put it this way. The easiest way I could probably put this is that Allah has freed Himself 
from taking any partners or having any partners. Yeah? Whereas the person who's committing shit, he sets up rivals and he he uh, he sets up rivals with Allah. That which Allah has affirmed for himself, that he's freed himself from. And this shows basically the uh, the uh, opposition uh, that the mushrik comes with. As in the, uh, what he comes with of those things that oppose what Allah has affirmed for himself. As in doing the opposite. <clears throat> so then now we reach the part where the shaykh will explain to us the types of shirk. And he says that the types of shirk are of two types. He says the first type, shirkun akbar yukhriju min al-millah wa yukhallidu saibahu fi nari idha mata wa lam yatub minhu wa huwa sarfu shay'in min anwa'i al-ibadati li ghayri allahi fa duwa'i ghayri allahi wa taqarrubi bilzaba'ihi wa nuduri li ghayri allahi min al-quburi li ghayri allahi min al-quburi wal jinni wa shayateen والخوف من الموتى أو الجن أو الشياطين أن يضروه أو يمرضوه ورجاء غير الله فيما لا يقدر عليه إلا الله من قضاء الحاجات وتفريج الكربات مما يمارس الآن حول الأضرحة المبنية على قبور الأولياء والصالحين قال تعالى وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَضُرُّهُمْ وَلَا يَنْفَعُهُمْ وَيَقُولُونَ هَا أُولَاءِ شُفَعَاءُونَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Surah Yunus verse 18 So then the shaykh says that the first type of shirk is the major shirk or the greater shirk the greater shirk or the major shirk and it takes the person who falls into the into major, we'll use the term uh, greater shirk for now Whoever falls into greater shirk, it takes him out of the fold of Islam. And if he dies upon uh, this without repenting, uh, then the person will be in will be in the hellfire forever, in the hereafter. If he dies upon uh, shirk, this shirk, and does not repent and ask Allah for forgiveness from it and rectifies his ways. And it is, and the greater shirk, what is it? The shirk says, he says it is sharing uh, a thing uh, from the types of ibadah. So sharing the types of ibadah or thing from the types of worship to other than Allah. So sharing something that is the haq of Allah, that is the right of Allah, that is specific to Allah only and applying it to something else from the creation of Allah or sharing it with other than Allah. The Shaykh explains, he says, like Supplicating, making du'a, supplicating to other than Allah, seeking nearness uh, with sacrifice, for example, to other than Allah, making oaths with other than Allah, uh, from whether that be from going to graves, asking jinns and the and the devils, and also fearing from the dead, fearing the dead people, the people who have died, fearing the dead. Or the jinn, or 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 the jinn, or the devils, that that they are able to harm you or make you sick, uh, and make you diseased or ill, and also hoping in other than Allah, in that which uh, that person or whoever it is or the thing it is is not capable of, so hoping in someone. Who is not capable of what you're hoping for. And that is only Allah is able and capable of doing that thing, whatever it may be. Whether that be, for example, from uh, taking care of one's needs, um, uh, seeking aid and help, for example, from uh, from the hardships that you uh, that one may uh, be experiencing and the shaykh says like how the people 
uh, exercise nowadays or practice uh, around uh, shrines, uh, graves are being built up into shrines um, uh, of uh, awliya, of the awliya of Allah, of the righteous people, where people gather around and start asking these dead people for uh, things that they can't help them with. Obviously, somebody who's died can't help you with anything. And obviously asking or supplicating to somebody um, uh, who is not capable of doing something, then it falls into shirk, as the sheikh explained earlier. Then the sheikh mentioned the ayah from Surah Yunus, verse 18. And if we go to the um, the meaning of that, uh, Surah Yunus, verse 18, uh, let's have a look now. Surah Yunus, verse 18. And they worship besides Allah things that hurt that don't hurt them nor profit them and they say these are our intercessors with Allah. So this is what they say and this is a, a proof against them here. Yeah. So the shaykh goes on to say the second type. So that we've covered the greater shirk. Now let's cover the uh, lesser shirk or the minor shirk. And no Uthani, the second type, shirk was the, the, the lesser shirk or the minor shirk. So here, the person who falls into the lesser shirk um, or the minor shirk, then it doesn't take him out of the fold of Islam. The shirk doesn't say, However, it doesn't take you out of the fold of shirk. However, it, it, it basically makes the person's tawheed, it makes that Muslim's tawheed deficient. And it is a reason or a way uh, to the greater shirk. So the lesser shirk, it opens up the doorway for the person falling into greater shirk. And it also reduces his or lowers his um, uh, tawheed, level of tawheed. The Sheikh says that shirk, this lesser shirk, it is of um, two types. He says the first type, al qismul awwal, shirkun wahir, the apparent shirk, shirkun wahir, wa huwa al fad wa afal, fal al al fad, fal halif, bi ghayri lahi, qala, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man halifa bi ghayri lahi, faqad kafar wa ashraka. وَقَوْلُهُ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ وَشِئْتَ قَالَ صلى الله عليه وسلم لما قال رجل ما شاء الله وشئت فقال أجعلتني لله ندا قل ما شاء الله وحده وقول وقول لولا لولا الله وفلان والصواب أن يقال ما شاء الله ثم فلان ولولا الله ثم فلان لأن ثم للترتيب مع التراخي تجعل مشيئة العبد تابعة لمشيئة الله كما قال تعالى وما تشاءون إلا أن يشاء الله رب العالمين. So here the Sheikh explains that there's two types of lesser or minor shirk. And the first type is what's apparent, the shirk that's apparent, the shirk that's apparent from it, and that is, for example, um, uh, actions or words that are said. For example, the Sheikh says, um, where if somebody um, swears to other than Allah. So, for example, instead of saying, Wallahi or by Allah, he calls up, he swears by other than Allah. And, uh, and, and this is a, a type of minor shirk. And the Sheikh brings a, a, a hadith of the Prophet Wasallam where the Prophet Wasallam said, whoever swears by other than Allah for indeed he has committed disbelief, kufr and shirk and fallen into shirk and also like the types of speech where someone may say ma sha Allah wa shi'it qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lama qala rajul ma sha Allah so here where, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where a man said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said to him ma sha Allah wa shi'it Whatever Allah wills and you will. And the important point here is the word and. So after, whatever Allah wills and you will. 
when this man said that to the Prophet Sallallahu the Prophet Sallallahu replied to him and said, have you made me alongside Allah a rival? And then the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, say, what Allah wills alone. Masha Allah wahda. And also, the Shaykh mentions here other speech or uh, statements such as Allah wa fulan, if it wasn't for Allah and so and so. And the Shaykh says that the correct saying should be in any of these phrases that we've heard and that we've read that uh, we should be saying what Allah wills, then so and so. That's allowed. And if it, is, if it wasn't for Allah, then so and so. So there's a difference now between an and then. And in the Arabic language, the grammar, etc., when using wow, uh, wow, the, uh, the letter wow, wa or an, it necessitates that at the same time, it's happening at the same time, it's to do with both your, your making both people, for example, or both things equal. That's why shirk, and that's why the Prophet said, say, mashaAllah, wahda. But if you say thumma, that's okay because you're, you're, set, you're making a clear distinction that it's because of Allah. And then whatever the other person may have done was just a, a, a way and means to it, for example. That's probably the best way to explain it and the easiest and simplest way to understand it. Yeah. So, and then the Shaykh mentioned an ayah from, a part of an ayah from Surah Al-Taqweer, verse 29. So let's go there and have a look at the meaning. Surah Al-Taqweer, verse 29. That actually was a whole ayah. And you will not, unless it be that Allah wills the Lord of the Allah, I mean mankind jinn, and all that exists. So that's the proof there. Then the Shaykh Wazim say, Wa amal wow fahiya li mutlak al jam wa lishti raq la taqtadi tartibun wa la taqibun. Wa mithluhu qawl ma ma li illallah wa ant wa hada min barakati la wa barakati. So it's just what I mentioned already, but the Shaykh says that um, may, whenever you say these kinds of statements, Masha Allah. Don't use wow, don't say mashallah, masha, uh, if Allah wills and you, or if it wasn't for Allah and you, don't use the word and, use then. Because there's a dis clear distinction when you use then, and there's clear separation. That the emphasis is on Allah, and that is because of Allah that it happened. And that there's no rivals being set up with Allah, and that you're not falling into uh, uh, shirk of al fad or uh, this polytheism, uh, the lesser polytheism or the lesser ship that's associated with uh, what somebody says on their tongue. Then in this end paragraph uh, here, the Sheikh says, وَأَمَلَ فَعَلْ فَمِثْلُ لُبْسَ الْخَلْقَ وَالْخَيْتِ لِرَفَ الْبَلَاءَ وَدَفْعَ وَمِثْلُ تَعْلِيكَ التَّمَائِنْ خَوْفًا مِنَ الْعَيْنِ وَغِيرْهَا إِذَا اتَّقَدَ أَنَّ هَذِي أَسْبَابْ لِرَفَ الْبَلَاءَ أَوْ دَفْعَهُ فَهَذَا شِرْكٌ أَسْقَبْ لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَجْعَلْ هَذِي الْأَسْبَابًا أَمَّا إِنَ اتَّقَدَ أَنَّهَا تَدْفَعُ تَرْفَعُ الْبَلَاءَ بِنَفْسِهَا فَهَذَا شِرْكٌ أَكْبَرْ لِأَنَّهُ تَعَلَّقَ بِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ So the Sheikh says in terms of um, the lesser shirk which is related to actions now not words or uh, things that are uttered on the tongue but actions then Somebody, for example, if he has like some kind of um, material cloth um, thread or whatever of these kinds of things, um, and he hangs them on certain places, in certain places, on certain objects, uh, whether that be in the house, their vehicles, whatever it may be, uh, because they believe that it will repel uh, uh, trials and tribulations or harms and it'll push them away, then if they believe that this thing is doing that, then they fall into the lesser shit. Um, also, like if they have like um, uh, talismans and things like that as well, and, uh, 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 and they're hanging these things in their houses, for example, we see this a lot, people hanging stuff on their cars as well, uh, materials, cloth, other things, and if they believe that it, 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 it's, it's a way and, ways and, it's a way and mean, it's a, it's a type of ways and means to repel a, a harm um, and push it away, then they fall into this lesser shirk. But however, um, the Sheikh says, uh, if they um, uh, believe that it itself is a thing, it itself 
it's completely in totality itself is the thing that can repel the harm or repel the evil eye or any other kind of harm, whoever it may be, then they fall into major shit. This is major shit now. So even and, and this is what the Sheikh said earlier that that the minor shirk actually is a way and leads the person to uh, to committing major shirk. This is a perfect example here that the Sheikh has brought for us to contemplate and ponder over. The Sheikh continues, he goes on to say, Al Kism of Tani min a shirk al Asgar. So now the second uh, the, the the second type of the lesser shirk. And it is uh, called Shirkun Khafi, the uh, hidden shirk, the shirk that's hidden. Um, the Shaykh goes on to say, وَهُوَ الشِرْكُ فِي الْإِرَادَاتِ وَالنِّيَّاتِ فِي الْرِيَاءِ وَالصُمْعَةِ And it's the shirk that's related to um, uh, um, intentions, intentions like showing off riya and sum'a. So a riya is like you doing, you, uh, you're doing actions uh, like uh, of worship. So you're, for example, you're praying. Let's use that example. That's easy one to understand. You're praying. You see somebody coming. And you all of a sudden start trying to beautify your prayer because the person is looking at you. That's the type of showing off is the riya, uh, and uh, and that's what riya is. For example, or you're doing any kind of good deeds, but instead of doing it for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala purely for Him, you're you 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 are doing it for other than Allah as well, and you're showing off. You're basically showing off, um, and you want to be seen doing these things. So somebody says, "Oh, I saw." So and so doing these such good deeds, doing this, doing that, X, Y, and Z. Because you want people to say, oh, I saw him. And Sum'a is the same kind of thing, but it's you want to be heard. So you, you want people saying, uh, uh, so instead of people seeing you and thinking that, oh, look, he's doing such good deeds and all that, uh, Sum'a is where you want to, uh, uh, yeah, you want, want people to, um, you know, tell pe other people, oh, so and so, Fulan, oh, he's doing good things, he's doing good things, he's doing this deed, he's doing that, uh, you know. And you want people to know of you by hearing your name. Yeah. Then the Sheikh says, Ka'an ya'mal amalan mimma yataqar bihi ilallah yurid bihi thana an nas alayhi ka'an yahsun salatahu aw yatasaddaq li ajdi an yamdah wa yathna alayhi. So basically the person wants to be heard or wants people to praise him and things like that. Uh, whether, uh, you know, through good deeds, for example, giving charity, praying, etc. and other, other acts of obedience and worship. So this is what the Shaykh mentions here. And then the Shaykh brings an ayah uh, from the Quran. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِبْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا So this is from Surah Al-Kahf, the last verse in Surah Al-Kahf. And if you have a look at the meaning of that, as most of us will know the meaning of this, where, where uh, the Shaykh brought the evidence, and the meaning of, it, of this is, say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I am only a man like you. It has been inspired to me that your ilah, God, is one. Ilah, God, I, Allah. So whoever hopes, so this is the bit. So whoever hopes for the meeting with his Lord, let him work righteousness and associate none as a partner in, in worship of his Lord, in the worship of his Lord. <coughs> then the Sheikh brings a quote from the, uh, he quotes the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now this is from uh, Ahmad wa Tabrani. Al-Baghawi and Baghawi fi sharh sunnah <coughs> and where the Sheikh says uh, where the Prophet said akhwafu ma akhafa alaykum al-shirk al-asghar qalu ya Rasulullah wa ma shirk al-asghar qala al-riya and then the Sheikh, uh, the Sheikh mentions here this, this hadith that we just read that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said from the most of the things that are fair for you uh, or upon you is the lesser shirk. They said, uh, the companions or around him, they said, O oh, oh, Messenger of Allah, what is the lesser shirk? And he replied to them, a riya, as the Sheikh mentioned earlier, a riya. The Sheikh goes, Wa minhu al-amal li ajli tama al-dunyawi. Kuman yahuj o yu'zan o yu'um al-nas li ajli al-mal. And the Sheikh also says that, and also from uh, the lesser shirk is is for the reasons uh, that people fall into is for the reasons of uh, the dunya or the worldly affairs. So they'll they'll do things they'll fall into this lesser shirk because of worldly matters uh, to lead people for station uh, for station for wealth you know for notoriety loads of different reasons in terms of 
in the world in the worldly affairs. Um, for example, also the Sheikh brings a few other examples. Says, for example, somebody may teach or learn uh, the uh, Islamic knowledge, for example, uh, or you know may strive in the in the path of Allah for the for wealth, for wealth, not for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, but for gaining wealth, for example. The Prophet Sallallahu said in this hadith that the Sheikh brought forth here. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم تعيسة عبد الدينار وتعيسة عبد الدرهم تعيسة عبد الخميسة تعيسة عبد الخميلة إن أعطي رضي وإن لم يعطي سخط. So then the Sheikh mentions this hadith with what is mentioned as evidence and the meaning of the meaning of this hadith. Where the Prophet said, May he be miserable, the worshipper of the dinar and the dirham, currency of that time, and the worshipper of the striped silk cloak. If he is given anything, he is satisfied and pleased. But if he isn't given anything, he becomes unsatisfied and gets angry. Hmm? So the Sheikh mentions that as an evidence as well. Then, getting towards the end of the lesson now. The Sheikh says, قال الإمام ابن القيم رحمه الله وأما الشرك في في الإرادات والنيات فذلك البحر الذي لا صعيد له وقل وقل من وقل من ينجو منه وقل من ينجو منه فمن أراد بعمله غير وجه الله ونوى شيئا من غير التقرب إليه وطلب الجزاء منه فقد أشرك في نيته وإرادته والإخلاص أن يخلص أن يخلص لله في أفعاله وأقواله وإرادته والنية وهذه هي الحنيفية ملة ملة إبراهيم التي أمر الله بها إبادة إباده كلهم ولا يق ولا يقبل من أحد غيرهما غيرهما وهي حقيقة الإسلام كما قال تعالى ومن يبتغي غير الإسلام دينا فلن يقبل منه وهو في الآخرة من الخاسرين وهي ملة إبراهيم عليه السلام التي من رغب عنها فهو من السفهاء انتهى. So then the Sheikh says he brings a quote he brings a what Alama Ibn Qayyim may Allah mercy upon him said he says and as for shirk this lesser shirk in term uh, uh, which is related to uh, intentions, for example, Riya, Suma, and what the Sheikh has been talking about, then he says it's a sea. It's just, it's an open, it's a sea. It's, it's, it, it's, it's widespread. There's many different ways and forms that a person can fall into. It's a huge thing that one can fall into. And very little have been saved from it. It's an ocean, as you can imagine the ocean, it's an ocean, it's a massive pitfall. So the Sheikh, he mentions here what the uh, Lamb of Nukhain mentioned, and he says, whoever uh, wants, by way of his actions, uh, uh, intends other than uh, the face of Allah, and he intends uh, a thing other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, then obviously he's at a loss. And at the end of the day, the Sheikh, he says here, that our intention, our intention should be sincerely and purely for the sake of Allah in, in actions, in, in our actions, physical actions, in our speech upon our tongues and our intentions. And he says that this is al hanifiya what they call al hanifiya Milla to Ibrahim, the way of Ibrahim, the deen of Ibrahim, at tawheed this is at tawheed It is the way of Ibrahim, alayhi salam, that you... All of your worship is for is directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and you share nothing of your worship with other than Allah. That's the and that's the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam. For the Shaykh goes on to say here then that, that Allah does not accept that anything be done, uh, our plans be set within the actions and accepted. And that if somebody does an action or does good deeds as well, in terms of this ayah as well that we read, uh, 
which we can take the meaning from here as well, is that whoever does good actions but is upon a deen other than the deen of Islam, then Allah doesn't accept it from him. As Allah said here in Surah Al Imran, verse 85, whoever seeks out a deen, a religion, a way of life other than Al Islam, uh, then it won't be accepted from him. And in the hereafter, in the akhirah, it will be from the losers. And the loser is going to end up in the hellfire. And the successful way, what is it? It's the deen of Al Islam, it's the way of Ibrahim. Salam. And whoever uh, turns away from uh, uh, the uh, way of Ibrahim, i.e., Tawheed, Tawheed, which all of the prophets and messengers were upon, then he is a fool. And then he stops there. So then the Shaykh just finishes this lesson off and he mentions, Yatalachas Mimma Mimma Marra. So then the Sheikh summarizes this quickly for us here. He summarizes uh, the differences. He says there are differences between the greater ship and the minor ship. He says in point one, he says that the um, that the greater ship it takes us it takes the person out of the fold of Islam, whereas the lesser ship, the minor ship, it does not take the person out of the fold of Islam. Point two, the greater ship. It necessitates that if a person dies upon it without repenting and dies upon that shirk, the greater shirk, then he will be in the eternal hellfire forever. Whereas a person who dies upon um, the lesser shirk, then it doesn't necessitate that he will be in the hellfire for eternity. But if Allah decides to punish him in the hellfire, it will be open to be purified. Yeah, and that's uh, uh, with all major sins. If Allah doesn't excuse you and you've fallen into major sins, um, uh, then uh, 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 the person is purified. That's for the Muslims who dies upon Tawheed. Um, that, he, that he will be purified and open to the point when he's purified, he will be thrown into paradise. Point three, the uh, major shirk, it nullifies all of your deeds. Whereas the lesser shirk, the minor shirk, does not nullify all of your deeds. Rather, it nullifies the deeds uh, which you uh, um, uh, did uh, and they were mixed with um, uh, this lesser shirk. So those deeds that uh, were mixed with this lesser shirk that you did, they're the ones that are not accepted. Um, that's for lesser shirk. But major shirk, all your deeds are nullified, everything. Last and point four, the great shirk, the major shirk, it makes that person's blood and wealth permissible, whereas the lesser shirk or the minor shirk doesn't. Uh, doesn't. So, inshallah, we'll stop there. Uh, we'll finish this lesson now. So, we'll uh, continue next week uh, with our lessons. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa tubi ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.